just a quick follow-up to the video I just posted on uh, how to measure your um, the tailstock quill run out with a uh, coax indicator. I wanted to show um, a, a, a great measurement that you should d uh, definitely take, uh, which I forgot to do, uh, and a, a good fellow on the 7x12 mini lathe Yahoo group uh, recommended it. And if anyone uh, here is looking to learn more about uh, these lathes, I highly recommend joining that group. Once again, that's the 7x12 mini lathe uh, Yahoo group. What I've done here is I've taken off my quick change tool post on my compound and I've gone ahead and put my magnetic base with my dial indicator on it and what I've done is uh, just run the quill all the way out and I've um, put my uh, dial indicator tip right on the top of the quill barrel. What I've been what I've also done though is moved off to the side a little. I know you're supposed to have it on the very top, but um, I'm getting I would get gyration or variances in the reading from the um, mark marks of the uh, length on the quill. So I've moved off to the side. I don't think that should be a problem. Um, zeroed out my indicator and what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and run the carriage down the quill, um, and this this uh, dial indicator reads in thousands of an inch ticks, and so when I get from the very end out to the front, which is a distance of, actually I'll measure that, it's a distance of just under two and a half, about 2.45 inches, so almost two and a half inches. Uh, the total run out is about six thousandths of an inch and that run out is directed uh, high as you can see if I pull the needle up it continues to move up so the the exaggerated view is that my tail stock is pointed towards the sky um, I'm going to start working with my mini lathe here and, and not worry about that um, that amount to run out but um, it's definitely something I'll, I'll try to take into account when I'm measuring or doing accurate work and you know if I need to shim it in the future I'll I'll look into it but nevertheless uh, certainly a good measurement to run just to finish up here and check if I run it all the way back and end up at my starting point um, actually of, of interest I'm actually uh, about a half a thou high so um, I'm gonna go ahead and run it back just kind of curious to see how how my markings hold. Okay, the same point there, just a hair under six thou. And running it back to the start. I'm at this uh, uh, maybe just a, a few tenths higher. Um, so I'm not really sure why it's sort of indicating up a little bit when I return back to the starting point. Uh, could be the setup or something that's a little bit loose in my carriage or you know could be the fact that this is a, a relatively inexpensive dial indicator and there's definitely some weak, weak points in terms of the flexing and such of the arm here but um, certainly I think proving the point that we know the tail sock is out it's probably about six thou high and uh, if need be I you know could shim it okay so I just measured the vertical alignment of the tail stock with my dial indicator now I'm going to use a dial test indicator, which I've got mounted in my um, A to Z quick change tool post and the boring bar, which has a 3 8 inch hole. Um, normally for a, you know, a boring bar like, uh, where's an example of a boring bar? Normally like in a boring bar like such. Um, but the dial test indicator that I've got, and I think most of them come with a 3 8 inch uh, hold down piece, which works perfect here. So what I'm going to do here is set this up and run it um, along the horizontal center or midpoint of the test, or excuse me, the quill, the tail stock fully extended and see what my run out is here. Um, if you'll note, I've got it set up a little bit, just took uh, care when I set it up so that it's tense, but there's still a hair amount of run out. Uh, what is of, you certainly also notice that if you, you know, if you if you bump this and wiggle this a little bit, 
you know, there's a couple of foul play, and that's partly because my carriage is not really fastened down well yet. I've got to play with the, um, I, uh, you know, the sort of um, uh, hold down pieces in the back here. But anyways, I'll, I'll be careful. I think I should still be able to get. I should have mentioned that the easiest way to set up the dial indicator properly here, excuse me, the dial test indicator is to mount it with the compound, um, which I've actually, if you note, I've got in parallel with the cross feed, which you normally don't, but, um, you know, mount it in it, and then as you rotate the compound in, you'll be able to put some tension on the uh, dial test indicator. So I've got that done. I'm carefully going to zero out the DTI. So I've got it zeroed. I'm at the sort of beginning of my quill, the tailstock, and as I rotate it out. And now this this reads in half foul uh, ticks. So I get out to the end and I'm at five ticks, so two and a half thou, and that is um, two and a half thousandths of negative distance. So to exaggerate it, the tailstock is pointing sort of back here, or sort of like like this. Um, so if I were to shim it, I would want to shim it on this side so that it would be pointing more <clears throat> towards the operator here. Um, but two and a half thou. Uh, of that distance is, is certainly, I think, going to prove to be sufficient for uh, my needs. As someone pointed out on the Yahoo group, you know, your uh, drills and Jacob's chucks and such, you know, don't necessarily hold perfectly true anyway, so don't need to worry about getting it within a few tenths yet. Uh, I'm also finding this interesting as I move the DTI back to the start here. I'm two ticks um, off or about a thousandth off in my favor. And if I run it back out to the end, I'm still at five ticks or two and a half thou. Go back to the beginning, and I'm at one, two ticks or one thou. So maybe the runouts are even less than two and a half thousand. So, uh, you know, I'm still new to this, so uh, we'll probably just continue to take some measurements over time and see how it uh, pans out. Thanks, everyone.